Let's take a look at a chunky little LED flashlight, or torch as we say in the UK, from AliExpress. And you'll notice it looks very similar to these very common type that uh, are available in a few different forms. But this one is by far a lot bigger. And it's notable, and I'll zoom down in this, it's notable that it has a very large lithium cell. It's a sort of 14500 sort of double A size lithium cell inside it. So let me show you the modes. Um, if you press the button once, it goes to full intensity. Press it again. No, notice the green uh, power level LED. Press it again. It goes to low intensity. That is so flickery. It's static to the human eye, but it's not static on the camera. Press it again. It's going to go into strobe mode, but I was too slow, so I'm going to have to click through them again. One, two, strobe mode, stroby, stroby, stroby. Then it goes on to the white LED, then the completely useless, I am a police car type thing. And then it lights an ultravioletish LED, but because the case has what looks like strontium illuminate in it, it uh, makes it fluoresce and kind of defeats the point of the ultraviolet. But uh, it's an interesting enough effect. And when you click the button, it goes off. If you leave it, say for instance, I went to low setting as before if you leave it for about 10 seconds and then click it will just go straight off this is good or alternatively if you're clicking through modes and you just press and hold continuously it will also go off okie dokie i'm going to zoom out a little bit now now i've shown those things maybe i shouldn't have been zoomed in so far in the first place but anyway it is a magnet in the back it comes with a little keychain adapter and it comes with a pocket clip for your pocket if you want to use that but anyway, do you know what happens now? We open it, and the end unscrews, revealing a total internal reflection lens jammed over a standard 1 watt or 3 watt LED bead. Uh, that's interesting. This is a Luxian star type LEDs. That means you can actually theoretically change the LED to one of your choice in it. Um... There is, incidentally, a USB-C charging port at the back. Is there anything that I should know about getting this out? Is it just going to, to lever out? I'm just going to gently just shove it from that connector as it moved. Oh, I can see a rubbery seal here. That might be being used to jam it in. What if I grab it with long nose pliers? This is where I break mine. But, you know, it's better I break mine than you break yours. So I'm going to grab the main circuit board here and pull. Oh, and uh, it's catch the rubber button. Now, I've found the past just ripping the rubber button out of these things usually helps. And here it comes. This material around here, is that just to stick it in? Oh, it's for the battery. It's actually just a double-sided pad. I'm going to click that button and get that off. Okie dokie. So, right, well, I'm going to take this circuit board off the end of the LED, or I might leave it on. And I don't think there's anything on the other side of this. I think all the circuitry is on here. And I'm going to make a guess for a start. Are they driving the LEDs directly from the output of this little microcontroller? I'm going to guess that it's using the classic transistor and resistor for the charge circuit, as sometimes found those solar lights, because the resistor value is 100 ohm, and it's a J3Y, and that's a classic uh, lithium charging control, a very imprecise lithium charge control. And the other side, we've got... Um, 3.3k resistor i'll find out and we've got a transistor again not sure what that is could be the same thing and it's switching the main led it doesn't look like there's much in the way of current limiting okay i shall do the usual i'll take some pictures we'll get a close look at it and we'll reverse engineer it one moment please reverse engineering is complete let's explore to say this is cost engineered is an understatement. It's like just really minimalist. Okay, are you ready for this? Here's the charge circuit. We've got the USB-C connector here. It's missing the two resistors needed to signal to modern chargers that it should even put power out. There's plenty of room for them. They just didn't bother putting them in. The lithium cell is charged with this transistor or J3Y and a 100 ohm resistor. Very common circuit uh, that's used that relies on the microcontroller to control end of charge, as far as I can see, unless these have a dedicated shunt regulator built in that just keeps the voltage there at a specific level. Never really worked it out. It always seems to be very vague. Even with a full cell, you put it in charge and it takes absolutely ages before the charge indicators change. So I'm guessing it's not that intelligent in there. 
Uh, the charge indicators, we've got a red and green LED. The reason for the vibrant flickering of them is simply because they're being driven directly by the output. And uh, the there's no current limiting other than what's integrated into the chip itself, which is probably just a logic output. And uh, that means to keep the intensity of those down, they just pulse with modulate them. There is another transistor with an unusually high 3.3k resistor and that to its base, and that is driving the main LED on the front of the flashlight. Um, there's a capacitor completely missing here because they've cost cut this. There's a button, there's a microcontroller, and then there's four LEDs on this side, some of which have paired connections. To So, for instance, these two pins here are paired together, and these two are paired together for the, uh, for the ultraviolet LED and the white LED to make them brighter. That's about it. Let's take a look at this schematic. It's very colourful because of the number of LEDs on it. So here's the USB incoming supply missing its little programming resistors, the 5.1K resistors. There's the 100 ohm resistor feeding the base of a J3Y transistor, very odd configuration, but that is then used to pass current through to the lithium cell. And by setting either a voltage on this, it'll terminate when it gets up to that voltage. It will simply act like a voltage regulator with no major significant current limiting. And, uh, at the end of charge, it does seem to pull this low and turn this off, although current will continue to flow through that 100 ohm resistor. There is the lithium cell. It does not have protection. So I'm guessing that over discharge protection is dealt with by the microcontroller just basically turning the lights off and the voltage gets too low. I didn't check that. I should have. We have the two charge LEDs just driven directly but pulsive modulated to control their intensity. And there's the red, ultraviolet, white and blue LEDs in the side, which with the ultraviolet and the white pair with pins paired up to increase the current. There's one push button going to the zero volt rail with internal pull up. There's the unusually high 3.3k resistor going to the base of this transistor. And the reason for that may be to try and use this operating partially in its linear region because certainly the voltage of the uh, lithium cell did not drop below about 4 volts when this 3 volt LED was on and uh, at 188 milliamps. So they are kind of using this as a resistor, which is naughty, but then they're just being cheap. So the currents, the main LED here, high was 188 milliamp on a freshly charged cell. Low was 45 milliamp. The strobe was averaging about 100 milliamps. The side emitting LEDs here... Uh, the white was 63 milliamps, so about 32 milliamps per pin. Uh, the red and blue was just such that a random pattern, I couldn't get an average for that. And the ultraviolet was about 72 milliamps, so about 36 milliamps per pin. Serious microcontroller abuse going on here, unless those pins are specifically designated as LED drivers. Uh, but that is it, there's not much else to say. When you put it back together again... It's worth mentioning, when I put it back together, I noticed that, firstly, this little rubber USB charge flap, I should zoom back in in this, and focus down onto the subject in hand. Make sure it's uh, pushed in the screwdriver, it's got a little slot in here, because it gets trapped in by the USB-C connector. Also make sure when you stick the battery back on, if you do enter the battery, it's going to have to have very thin double-sided foam, because otherwise if you use standard foam pads, it packs the size up too much and it makes it very tight to go in. Also, make sure the wires are dressed carefully so they don't actually get trapped uh, behind that connector as you're pushing it in, otherwise they can basically get minced. I did that. The definitely the way for taking this out is to unscrew the front. I do like the fact that the lens, the total internal reflection, TIR lens, is a friction fit on the LED. It holds it nicely in place. And it is a standard one watt cob, uh, cob, one watt bead. If you look online on eBay, AliExpress and search for one watt LED beads, you'll find these. So you could put your own choice of colour in. There's no heat sink as such. It is just an ordinary circuit board in there. Um, this button, to get the circuit board out, just pick it out. It's the easiest thing because it can't really slide under it too easily. So this thing just basically just shoves in with a bit of uh, squishing and it'll go back into position, turning the thing on the process. Uh, and that is more or less it. It goes together again fairly easily. The circuitry is super minimal. It's not super mega bright compared to some of the others. 
and they've just kind of skimped on the circuitry to the maximum degree. But other than that, you know, for what it is, it's a cheap flashlight, cheap torch with useful little accessories. It's fully rechargeable via the USB-C connector. I didn't measure the charge current, but I'd have to discharge it to actually... I shall leave a note of the charging current uh, in the description. I also didn't uh, check the capacity of the cell. I could also test that. Oh, no, I can't because I'd have to take the cell out to do that because this pesky bit of circuitry... Uh, really skews that resistor driving the base of the transistor really skews the simple uh, charge input testing but other than that uh, it's quite a neat device it works and well what do you want for a couple of quid or dollars or whatever it is uh, in your part of the world but there we have it uh, i shall provide a link to it in the description but shop around you'll find others uh, the most notable feature is this big visible cell inside the case. But there we have it, quite an interesting and super cost-optimised little flashlight or torch.